I wanted to go back to work, but I didn't want to leave my children. And um, prior to starting the glamping, I was a freelance copywriter. Um, and I was looking at taking a job up in Dublin with an ad agency. And um, I just realised that I just wasn't going to see my kids. And I didn't really want to do that. So um, we kind of were looking for other options, something that I could do from home um, and work in synergy with the family commitments. Um, so that was one of the kind of key factors. Um, and then the other reason, um, you know, we, we had sort of heard that there wasn't that much glamping available. Um, some friends of ours had tried to book a glamping stay and they just couldn't get booked one summer, obviously about um, seven or eight years ago. And they were just saying, God, there's just nowhere and there's nowhere in leash and there's nowhere, just the glamping places are booked up. Um, so at that time, it was a really kind of a new concept in Ireland. There were very few glamping sites at that time. So we said, oh, here, maybe between having a beautiful location in Leash and some in-house building skills and some in-house marketing skills, um, we could sort of pull, pull these resources together to, to, to go ahead and, and start the glamping site. So that was kind of the, the impetus for it. Glamping Under the Stars is a glamping site. There's actually two glamp sites here. So there's our... Uh, Meadow site, which is our original glamp site, which we set up back in 2016. Um, it's a mixture of bell tents, wooden cabins, and a shepherd's hut. And then um, we've since built a hobbit village, which is our mountain glamp site, um, which has six little grass-roofed hobbit houses. Um, and the idea behind it really is to provide families with somewhere lovely to go for breaks, short breaks for families with kids. Um, and we also have a lot of hen parties here. So it's kind of a good way to connect with family and friends and you're kind of away from modern life, busy, hectic technology and all that kind of stuff. It's really back to basics. There's a certain amount of nostalgia involved in sitting around the campfire and just connecting with people that you love. When we started, we had a mixture of bell tents and wooden cabins and um, it was kind of classic glamping. It's what people tend to think of. The bell tents are quite simple. Um, they're all furnished and they actually have electricity running out to them. So they're big spacious tents with high ceiling. You can stand up easily inside them. And they all have um, proper beds and, you know, they're nicely presented. Um, but now that things have moved on so much with glamping, they are kind of more the basic option. And it's more akin to original camping with a few creature comforts. So then the wooden cabins are kind of wood lodges. Uh, they're a bit cosier. They're well insulated. Um, they have little wood burning stoves inside and little sort of chocolate box windows. And they're a bit more quirky and something a little bit different. Um, my husband, Barry, is a builder by trade. So he's quite handy to have around. He's great with his hands. He can make anything out of wood, pretty much. Um, so he, he designed and built those. So they're completely different to anything else you'd see anywhere else. So we moved on then, um, having learned a lot from building those and constructing those and having people to stay in those and enjoy um, the more original kind of classic glamping in the meadow site. Um, we put together a plan to build a second site, which is the Hobbit Village with the little Hobbit houses. And um, they're actually a lot more luxurious. Um, they're really cosy inside. The walls are built from ICF, which is insulated concrete formwork, uh, which is like polystyrene kind of insulation on both sides. And then you pour concrete inside. So they're super insulated, super strong and super warm. And we needed them to be strong because they could support the grass roofs then. Um, so each one has its own unique theme and they're kind of based around fantasy holidays escapism so we've got like um, the woodcutter's house and the beach house um, which we really like because we're based in Leash and Leash is the only county that doesn't touch a county that touches the sea so there's a bit of a joke there as well. Um, when we first set up the glamp site um, people were very skeptical about people coming to take holidays in Leash. Um, you know it, it's only seven years ago but loads has changed since then and I think the perception of Leash as a destination has changed in that time. Um, certainly when I started putting together ideas of places for people to go with their families, with kids, um, and even the hen parties, um, you know, I found, found out quite a lot about Leash and found out that there was actually loads to see and do locally. And so we've kind of packaged that up and, and promote Leash as a destination. And it's incredibly family friendly um, between, say, the Rocket on a Mace, Emo Court, the boardwalk over the bog in Abbey Leaks. Um, there's lovely places in Durrow, the Scarecrow Festival, the Electric Picnic Festival, and now the ploughing as well. But I mean, 
we're just on the on the sort of cusp of the Schlieve blooms as well. So there's loads of mountain bike trails up there. There's beautiful waterfalls. Um, you know, the list goes on and on, really. And I think one of the nice things about it, especially in the kind of current crisis of, of costs of everything getting so expensive, that Leash, because it's not a, a tourism destination that people would maybe think of, um, that it hasn't been commercialised in, in the same way that other places have. So if you think about going to the Rocket on a Mace, it's free to park, it's free to enter, there's no charge for anything. And, you know, you can pop out somewhere nice and get some food on the way home. Um, and the same with Emo Courts. You know, I know you can pay to do a tour of the house, but you can enter the grounds, park up, do a tour, take a picnic. That's a free day out, you know, and it's, it's a fabulous place to go and visit. There's lots of places like that in Leash, and I think that's one of the main strengths that we have, that just it's kind of undiscovered. You're away from the crowds and you're not going to be ripped off, you know what I mean?